This is a cricket podcast. You know, the Firebirds a bit of a tough season for this team. They haven't made the playoffs. Two mates obsessed with the game. I wonder why you're picking the Vaults. Is there a, like a particular reason that you're leaning towards the Vaults? Is there like a, a particular player? Covering all the on-field action. Can South Africa ever stand up in a tournament? Maybe in their own backyard. This is the Back of a Length podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Back of a Length podcast. When I here with you and also here is Mark. Hello. Hello. Yeah, welcome back to our episode we were missing last week. Before we talk cricket this week, just want to wish everybody, you know, that was affected by the weather events of the last sort of 10 days uh, well. I hope everybody is safe. It was pretty crazy. It was really crazy and it's it's not over so we do ask, you know, if you're out and about be careful, there's still lots of slips on the roads, lots of slips on walking tracks, the beaches aren't safe so we hope you are all taking uh, precautions and we do wish you all the best if you have been really affected. It was pretty bad, um, about as bad as Auckland Aces challenge for the title this year in the Super Smash. <laughs> Oh so, dear. Yeah, I think bad. we should get straight into the cricket. Yeah, um, let's talk cricket. Uh, it was Hines versus Brave, Stags versus Brave on Friday night. Now, let's start with the Hines because a massive shout out to the Hines. Final round of the Super Smash, and they took their first win of the season. <laughs> that is sensational. Um, yeah, save the best performance for last. Um, although it was a bit of a hit out, a bit of a hit and a giggle, right? Yeah, it was. It was five overs after a lot of rain in Hamilton. Um, yeah, Brave got 38. The Hines had to hit 39 to win. It was Flora Devonshire with 22 off 13 to get it there for the Hines. So it really, really wasn't a win. I mean, it was. It was on the books as a win, but <laughs> it wasn't really. Yep. Look at the look at the book. Look at the points table. They got their first win. Um, very overdue, and do you know, actually delighted for them. Mm. Um, the Stags then took on the Brave, mm. and the Stags top order was ripped apart. It um, was by um, the bowlers a, a really of the Brave. It was. It was a really important game for both teams because basically, whoever won this would take one of the top three spots. Um, but the uh, the Brave just got on top of the Stags down at uh, Seddon Park. Um, it was. Can I just say? I love seeing Neil Wagner play T20 cricket. He wants to do it more, doesn't he? Well, yeah, I'm sure he I... said after the Auckland Aces yeah. game that he was like, oh, you know, I really enjoy it. People don't back me in this. But mm. he took a good few wickets in the Auckland Aces game. And they were and also it, saying... Um, you they know, were also appears saying... to be bowling really well in this format. Yeah, they were saying he actually bowls differently from tests as well. And he was saying he had to change his game quite a lot um, and works on his game mm. in this format because you can't just basically hone down the same ball in T20 cricket. As you know, it's all about variety. And he's he's a very fast yes. learner. So I, I we could see a bit of a comeback from, well, not a comeback, but a, a format change for Neil Wagner. Um, they had him in the commentary box um, while the uh, Brave were batting. And he said he's, he's still got mm. a good few years left in him does to be fair um and he's maybe put himself into a big bash contract there for next year oh, who knows um, <laughs> we will see him again later because the brave <laughs> did take that win jeep Ravel with the captain's knock to bring the brave home um yeah the stags falling from grace here because they were top of the table for a long time have they had a mm -hmm. very good team cleaver clarkson russ taylor was playing well will young came back and um, ducky bracewell done down the order so a pretty tom bruce tom bruce yeah disappointing fall for the stags really um i, I think it is hard to for the you know to say this about the stags so remembering they play a lot of their games early in the season at Pukakura Park and at um, McLean Park where the grounds are smaller yeah. and they can just absolutely thrash it so yeah not surprised they got on they got on top and then they went the, to the bigger grounds and kind of didn't yeah is that is that a format thing that maybe needs to change in the Super Smash? Because the same was said for Auckland. Like, they played a lot of games at Canard's Community, Higher, Oval, however many other words that I've mm. missed out in that particular name of the ground. They played a lot just after just after New Year in a short space of time. It felt like every game was a home game, and then they haven't played at home for a while. Like, Correct. They did I play just don't understand games. why the format of that is. Yeah. 
They played all their games one after the other um, at home, so five weeks in a row in a 10-round tournament. So, yes, it was the first uh, two through three rounds were um, not at home, and then the final round mm. was not at home as well. So, yeah, I possibly um, probably wouldn't have helped this Aces team. Yeah, oh yeah, it doesn't matter where they play, they were bang average all over the country. Um, but I, yeah, it's just really interesting that they have, like all teams have a group of home games consecutively, um, as opposed to, you know, playing one at home and then one away, which is mm. the typical sort of format of sport. Um, there must be a reason for it. If you know what that reason is, please get in touch and let us know, because it is perplexing to me, but what do I know? Wow, not much. <laughs> Good one. Okay. I didn't let's talk realize a... comedian Renee was standing up tonight. <laughs> Crikey. All right, let's talk Saturday of the Super Smash. It was the first of the Southern Derbies for the weekend. Um, now, the Sparks had pretty much their first game without their key white ferns, but it didn't stop them taking a pretty decent win over the Magicians. Um, just a really good all round performance from the woman there. Sparks showing that they didn't really miss the white ferns too much. I guess that's the sign of a good team, right? Is there's probably mm-hmm. some teams in the Super Smash that are really reliant on their international players. Mm-hmm. Once they go missing, they their performances go missing. But yeah, kudos to the Sparks for I continuing like their good form in the tournament. I quite liked what you just said then. I like that little phrase. That little phrase. Kudos. No, the bit about the white friends go missing, the teams go. I've already forgotten what you said, but I liked it. Okay. Volts Kings <laughs> Volts Kings played afterwards um, now this was uh, again a game with which would determine um, the final spots and the, I think these are two very even teams here the Volts versus the Kings um, Kid McClure finally got some form uh, to get to Kings to a good total he's come off an injury and then a bang average start uh, in the tournament but managed to get up to just below his half century but then it was Jake Gibson came out to bat for the vaults, and oh my gosh, Mark, Jake Gibson, so close to the first hundred of the men's tournament. Oh, he got out on 96. 96, that is unfortunate. Did he get out swinging? Yeah, I mean, they were really close to like, the end. Did he get caught in the boundary? Was it, a, yeah. um, was it a Will Young almost golden shower moment? <laughs> was no, no, there wasn't. It wasn't five, uh, five sixes and one over. But it wore, he was playing so well. Um, but they, they did have to put the foot down. They had wickets in hand, so I could see what he was doing. But yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I just want them to be selfish and get their milestones. A hundred percent. Yeah, they've worked that hard for it. Mm-hmm. Then they kind of deserve to just you know nudge a couple of singles there at the end of the. Um, the end of the innings, but I guess then if you lose by sort of, you lose I think in the last couple of balls, your hundreds really for nothing, so you go yeah. down swinging for the team, right? Yeah, It's a sure. team game. Yes, uh, if you say so. Um, Dean Foxcroft, did he do anything this week, Dean Foxcroft? He um, is the vault saviour, isn't he? He had a quieter weekend, um, but you are correcting, Foxcroft is... I mean, we still got a, a week to go, but Dean Foxcroft should be the player of the tournament. He can catch, he can bowl, he can bat... He can stay calm. He looks good doing it. And he, most importantly, he has not touched the bottle of bleach that has seemingly taken over the Volts team. That is really, really good for him. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Good for him. I'm not a massive fan of all these bleach blondes. Like 90s Australian cricketers that <laughs> seem to be doing the rounds at the moment. Sunday in the Super Smash saw Hearts take on the Blaze. Blaze were unbeaten all season throughout this tournament so far mm-hmm. and that is no longer the case go on hearts oh, yeah. go to the hearts the Auckland hearts beat the plays their shame. first defeat of the season shame shame oh. yeah you stay back down at in shame their first defeat all season Sachi Shari with an absolute gem of an innings opening mm. the bat and really anchor a really good total for the hearts mm. um, she's great Yes, the Blaze may have been without some of the White Ferns players that are going to the World Cup, but like mm. we said earlier about um, the, you know, about the Sparks, it's a team game, right? You can't mm. be solely reliant on your international players to see you through. Sounds like the Blaze were so really they don't even deserve to win the title. No. So Let's I hope they the don't. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think no, yeah, it was it was amazing. Shoo-ins. 
it was really good to see the woman go out with a, a solid win here. Um, so I think they can take that, yeah. that as a high. Um, look, look, the Hearts were also without a few key players. They didn't have Lauren Down or Arlene Kelly, um, who were both on international duty. So, yeah. you know, the, 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 there are some good players standing up here. Um, looking forward to seeing more of the Hearts in the coming seasons. Yep. This season, whilst they weren't particularly great, um, this year, they seem to be a little bit more consistent, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, some really key performers putting in some consistent performances throughout the season. Um, and next season, that will serve them well. And mm-hmm. how many times can you say season in a sentence? That was pretty I good. I reckon I did it quite a it few times. Like, it was four seasons in a season. <laughs> You're really happy with that one, aren't you? Good, <laughs> girls. Pretty happy with Four that one. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk Auckland men, Wellington men, um, Aces Firebirds. Auckland going out with a high, uh, winning over winning over Wellington. Um, Robbie O'Donnell, a good captain's knock. Um, do you know what? Though I always get really sad when it's like Court Van Beek. Oh no, Bold Van Beek, Court Milne, because those are like my favourite players. But I don't want them to get out an Aucklander. Well, if it turns out to be not particularly match defining then surely you could be happy about that right um like robbie yeah. o'donnell getting 43 and essentially winning the game for auckland getting out bold van beek court mill is better than robbie o'donnell getting a golden duck bold van beek court mill because that would probably make you a little bit more sad right anything's better than getting so a you can seek duck. solace in the fact that it was a captain's knock of 43 one yeah. auckland aces yeah. the game okay. but you two of it your did. favorite cricketers still did something oh what a what an absolute pep talk that you just gave me there that was beautiful thank you honestly i'm available for life coaching if anybody needs it don't do that hit me up um possibly who might need some (laughs) life coaching though the firebirds a bit of a tough season for this team um they had always known as one of the best teams in the super smash two years ago we would have Mm. said they were undefeatable but uh, haven't made the playoffs. They they have a new coach in BJ Watling. They've got the new captain, Peter Young Husband, this season. They have a number of black caps away for Nell and Tom Blundell, uh, Michael Bracewell. Um, and they also had Hamish Bennett retire last season. They brought in Adam Milne. Of course, Adam Milne is going to get injured. So a bit of chopping and changing and unsettling amongst this team, I felt. Yeah, but I think it's always going to be the case. You're always going to be a victim of your success, right? Mm. You go back a couple of seasons ago and you say that, yes, the um, the Wellington side is a really good, well-made-up team of mm. you know really good players. But then those really good players get noticed and then they go to international duty. Yeah. So it's always going to be the case. The better you are as a team, the more you know victories that you get, the more tournaments that you win, your players will get picked for international duty. That's just natural progression. Mm. What they've really struggled with, the Firebirds, I guess, is finding a consistent team to replace the mm. international players when they leave. They started the tournament really well, and then as soon as Phil Allen left, they were like, it was constant, consistently like 30 for 5, 40, mm. 50 for 5, and relying upon the likes of Logan Van Beek to get them up to a decent total. Mm. Which he shouldn't be, because he is batting a bit further down the order now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, Firebirds a lot to think about after this season, um, and I think they know that. They knew that even just looking at that game, they just knew that it hadn't all gone their yeah. way. They'll probably grow from it and come back next season an absolute different beast. And you look Absolutely. at the Stags last season, the Stags were awful, and now mm. they're what well, they should have been, uh, you know, heading for the finals. But cricket's a funny game. It is. Uh, speaking of funny things to happen in cricket, Monday Super Smash Games was a repeat of Saturday Super Smash Games, um, the Southern Derby 2.0. Now, the Sparks beat the Magicians again. <laughs> Absolutely dominant. Love that. Yep. Um, then the Vault took on the Kings again. Firstly, Michael Rippon was back. Na, 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he got bold for a golden duck. And I can yeah, see that you're um, possibly a little bit sad that that misfortune makes me so happy. Yeah, it was a... Don't even apologise. It was a bloody good uh, caught and bowled by, I think it was Angus McKenzie. Um, catch down to was uh, right poor near the ground, so I can't do too much about that. You know what? That's what that's you, what happens when you run games in two yeah. weeks in India and you don't get any game time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is could, precisely uh, true. 
the votes um, below par score at Uni Oval, usually you're wanting to hit over 200, they got to about 166, and the Kings put on a 95 uh, run opening partnership between Chad Bowes and Kenny McClure, um, which pretty much just took the game completely away. Leo Carter yep. then came in in the runs, uh, and Colin McConkie finishing it off there. So the Kings winning that game and going to the top of the ta- table, guaranteeing a home final. So, this Thursday, we have the elimination final, where two plays three on the table. Would you believe, Mark, it will be the Sparks and the Magicians again for the third time <laughs> in one week. Uh, at least I'll get to know each other's games pretty well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, are the Magicians going to be able to have get them back? Well, I'm not... Here's a question. For, so here's a question for you, right? If you played the same team three times in a week, would you care that you got beat the first two times if you beat them in the eliminator final? Nah, absolutely not. No. Nah. Because you're going to the final. It's, I it's would. I would still late. care because if you win those two other games, you would probably be straight into to the final. Um. No, I believe that's that's incorrect because the Blaze were that far ahead. Um, I do, I do understand that is true. Yeah, mathematically, that is true. but in this particular yeah. case, I do not uh, know. So the blaze in any were, normal situation, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the blaze went. Yeah, in any normal situation yeah. where the blaze weren't utterly dominant, yeah. Um, but yeah, I suppose in this situation, you would take those two defeats this week in order to win the eliminator and get yourselves into the final against Correct. a blaze that will be without the. All you know, all their international players. Mm. So are they a little bit vulnerable? Well, they will I also think... be a week without mm. cricket. And coming off coming off a loss, um, I would be backing the Sparks here because I've noticed that the Sparks are consistently performing well across all their players, even without the White Ferns. So they don't have um, Susie Bates and Eden Carson at the moment, but they have uh, got. Um, uh, sort of scores that are spread throughout the team and wickets spread throughout the team, whereas the Magicians do seem to be held up by Sathedway and um, Anderson at the top order them, one of them getting sort of a big score and then some smaller scores around that. Um, and yeah. even same with the Blaze, Rebecca Burns seems to be their top player at the moment. So I, I think I think the Sparks could take this. That's a bold call. Um, mm. We shall find out next weekend, I believe, next yes. Sunday. Uh, yes, this weekend. Um, meanwhile, the Volts um, will play the men's brave team. Um, I'm going to back the Volts. I wonder why you're picking the Volts. Is there a, like a particular reason that you're yep. leaning towards the Volts? Is yep, there like there... A, a particular player, or you um, just yes, you know just yes. really like the whole round squad? Um, there, it, there's a um, there's a particular reason. It's because uh, Michael Ray currently has the most wickets in the Super Smash, followed by Matt Bacon. So they've got two of the two of the best bowlers. Matt Bacon, okay. um, best bowling figures of the tournament as well. And would you know, Lou Johnson has had the most sixes. So that's a lie. He's had the, the third most sixes. And they've got all round superstar Dean Foxcroft. They do. So... They've got Dean Foxcroft. And I they, think they might they might have some other have guy really called Ma- Ma- Martin Rippon. <laughs> Michael Blippon. <isn't> <laughs> Just kidding. It's Michael Rippon. Michael Rippon. Michael Rippon's back for the boat. That um, is a lot of jingles. <laughs> it's a Michael Rippon jingle. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I think the Volts will be the brave, but again, if the Volts go through to the final, it will be very close. They're playing at Hagley Oval, and oh my gosh, the Christchurch love to play at Hagley Oval. You've also got Chad Bowes with the most runs for the men, and Leo Carter with the yep. second most runs for the men. Chad Bowes with the second most sixes. Chad Bowes with like the third highest score, the most uh, fours. He's a bit. He's a bit of an all. Go is getter, he, isn't is he? A decent Sorry. player, is he? Yeah, might be right. Decent player. Kings could be on for a win here. Are you going to make a call on the finals? Am I going to make a call? Mm. No. Okay. You saw. Uh, do you know what? I would, but every time I say something, I get it wrong. So I'm just going to sit on the fence and enjoy the games for what they are as a neutral because the Aces suck and they were nowhere near the finals. <laughs> Finals, <laughs> finals this weekend of the Super Smash. We love the Super Smash here, so please get amongst it. Um, follow us on Twitter at back of a link that underscore. Um, we will be covering all the action. Um, there will be um, proper tweets from the podcast account and probably just crazy tweets from my account. 
you want to follow me too. Which is just another normal day on your yeah. podcast account. Moving on pretty quickly, the Women's T20 World Cup starts this weekend. Yes, it does. As we said, all the white phones are away because they're at the T20 World Cup. Um, kicking off this weekend, very, very exciting. We've got 10 teams contesting for this title. So now the white phones have named a very... Um, not obvious squad like a very a good squad the squad of names that you would know really the only people missing from the squad that took on the ODI World Cup is um, Katie Martin and Amy Satherthwaite both both who have uh, now retired from international cricket um, now one thing I wanted to point out about the White Ferns is you will have three players there for Jonas George Plummer and Izzy Gaze all playing in the recent under 19 tournament in South Africa so they're going to go in with um, some experience on both competition T20 um, you know tournament vibes I guess you would say and they're going to go on yeah experience on the pitches as well so hopefully that will lean into the white ferns favor um meanwhile all the standard names Susie Bates um Mele Kerr Jess Kerr later who've all had amazing Super Smash campaigns and good 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 news is Sophie Devine is likely to have recovered from a broken foot by the weekend so Mark I'm thinking white ferns are going in at a good at a good point yeah, they've actually got a really strong team. Um, mm. But I, I look at the other strong teams. Yeah. So for me, there's probably three, maybe four. But I'm going to go three really mm. strong teams in this tournament. And they are Australia, England, and New Zealand. Yeah. And my fourth I'm put in there is, I actually think South Africa have a really strong team. Their strong team is a strong team. But it's not quite as strong as, especially Australia. Um, I think we can all mm. agree on that. Are they as strong as England and South Africa? The White Ferns? Mm, yes. I think they're stronger. I just, I, I can never get over this this concept that South Africa are the ultimate World Cup chokers, no matter whether it's T20s, ODIs, World Test Championship, men's, women's, no matter what. Like, can South Africa ever stand up in a tournament? Maybe in their own backyard, maybe with a decent team, or Volvo, when it's loose, um, Maris and Cap. Decent players there, so maybe they could stand up. Um, but Mark, brutal news for the South African team. Their uh, yeah. captain, Danny Van Niekerk, not in the squad, missing a two-kilometre time trial by 18 seconds. Oh, I know there's rules, but come on. Yeah, it's. I find that absolutely mental. Um, mm. The only positive to come of this was the comments that I saw on Twitter. Mm. One particular Twitter user commented, that's fair enough. How can she run from the wicket to make a catch boundary um, if she's not fit enough? And you're just thinking, how many times have you seen a player run from the middle of the pitch to the boundary to take a catch? I, do, I like, thought they had to do about seven laps of the field before they could take a catch. That's where the 2Ks came from. Yeah. And <laughs> it's in a three-legged race as well with a member of the uh, a member of the yes. spectators, as per oh. your request for improvements on T20 cricket. Yeah, I think it's mad that you can miss a time trial by 18 seconds and your your experience and your skill level just gets thrown to the side. Mm. It's, yeah, I, really. I, there's no substitute. You can be the first person in the world, like I am, for example. <laughs> uh, but you can be really bad at cricket, like I am, for example. Like, there's no substitute for experience mm. and skill, right? And if you're yeah. a batter in a T20 World Cup, just hit the ball to the bit. Hit the ball for six, man. Don't yeah. need to worry about fitness if you're smoking every ball for six. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's mad. Don't get it. It is mad. I mean, I know there has to be a standard for people to be fit enough, but I, I don't understand how a two-kilometre run is that. And 18 seconds, one of your best players, you're, you're mad. Yep, okay. completely agree. Um, to South Africa's detriment, it is the you know it is a real positive for the teams that will have to play South mm-hmm. Africa in this tournament. But let's not write them off because they are still a strong team. You um, mentioned that obviously a lot of all that uh, Sune Luce, Marazan Cap, um, but three that we can name. Mm, good team. Tell us about England now, Mark. 
and knight Sophie Ackerstone, Catherine Siverbrunt, now that her and Love Nat Siver have been married. Nat Siverbrunt, um, yeah. Izzy Wong, who had a really good yes. um, summer back in the UK, and Sophia Dunkley as well, um, with team. more obviously Amy Jones there as the keeper. Um, really strong team. But again, probably just not as strong as Australia. Yeah, and the other thing with they Australia... They really are setting um, the bar. They are, and they've welcomed back Meg Lanning as their, coach, uh, as their captain. So is, that's just a whole other layer of experience and good yes. talent. So yeah. they're, they're so... The bar is like through the roof when it comes to Australia. Um, but it's T20 cricket. Anyone can get knocked off. Absolutely. On the day, anyone, in theory, should be able to beat anyone. Um, so... Yeah, really excited actually to see this tournament. It is a massive pain in the ass that it's at a time that is not particularly um, conducive to mm. New Zealand viewership, but we will try and keep across as much as we can. Um, mm. We're going to go out on a limb, and I think you're going to start with this, choosing your bowler and batter of the tournament. Yeah, and we've said they can't be from, what, New Zealand, England, or Australia? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go better, Laura Volbart, because I love her. I think she's that was my choice. Oh no, she's else. my one. I love her so much. <laughs> um, bowling. I'm gonna go Jahanar Alam from Bangladesh, just because I love her vibe. Like she's so fierce, and I swear to God, every every game she adds more eye makeup. She's just like a t- tiger <laughs> running down, like ah, gonna bowl. Um, and bowled really, really well when Bangladesh came here uh, last year. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing her this tournament. Yeah, I'm really upset that you chose both my batter and my bowler. Um, for those who don't know, I am in love with Jahanar Alam. Think Michael Rippon, but for me. Um, but I don't really talk about it that much because I'm not a creep, so I don't need a jingle. I'm just oh. going to add that one out there. Um, for me, I'm going to go with... Anna as bats our batter of the um, tournament and mm. bowler is a really difficult one because you'd imagine that the best or the three best bowling lineups are probably um, England, New Zealand, Australia, and we can't choose from them. So I'm going to go with blessed be to God, Marazan Cap. Love Marazan Cap. Um. Great choice. Yep, I think she will be very, very handy. Um, I'm also just going to, I can hear our friend Steph in my ear, so I'm also just going to give a massive shout out to Arlene Kelly, who's playing for Ireland, um, and I hope she has a good tournament. Yeah, without wanting to do an impression of Steph. Go, Arlene! Go, Arlene! You hear that at the Hearts games all the time. All right, yes, as we said, that kicks off this weekend. Follow us on Twitter again. We will be trying to cover all the action with those niggly, niggly time zones. Um, But, yeah, really, really excited for this World Cup. I love a World Cup. I love almost cricket. We'll bring you all of the action if we can. Um, What time is it? It's time for first 11 of the week, of the week, of the week. Mark Griffin got both for Golden Duck. Um, Let me know. It's going to be a musical today. I brought my ukulele along. Oh, I should have. Okay, uh, well, Mark, you may have noticed, as we said at the start, it's been a bit of water around. So I've gone and made the first 11 of water. Okay, I'm intrigued to see how this will go. Is this players who have got some sort of, like, water in their name? Like yes, that's correct. Like Jim yeah. Laker, for example, something like that? Yeah, okay. Well, d- don't spoil it. Was he in there? I I've yes. never seen this before. I do apologize. Okay. okay. In at one. In at one. Alex hails. Like hail from the, gro- from the from the sky. As opposed to from the ground. Yeah. Okay. Two, uh, Matthew <laughs> Wade. Sorry. Three, Cyril yeah. Washbrook. Now, four, five, and six. Um, Cyril Rosh- Washbrook. He's from old school. Old school cricketer. Uh, so four, five, six are all of the same uh, names because it turns out there wasn't wasn't very many. So I've gone with Michael Brace yeah. Well, Glenn Max Well, and Sam Wells. <laughs> seven. As, Thanks for emphasising the well in those names. <laughs> seven as you spoiled is Jim Laker. Eight is Mitch Marsh. Nine is Henry oh, nice. Shipley. Ten is. Billy Stan Lake and 11 is Billy Ocean 
I do you know what? I, that got better as it went on. Thank you. Like yeah, that. it did. Turns out more bowlers have uh, water names than mm. non bowlers. Yes. Thank you for listening. We are on socials as always. Back of a link on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook as well. Get in touch. Come say hi. We've made some friends this year, so it's lovely. We have. Yeah, we actually have, which has been nice. Um, mm. And we're always looking to build that friendship circle. So do reach out. Next week will be all about the preview of the test. So we will leave it there for this week and come to you next week with the rivalry will reach all-time new heights. Can't wait. A rivalry for the ages. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.